Ich so nur da drauf für mich. Ja, sei dann schon vorne. Ja, und da look du. Watch my Kevin. When you grab the link, send, 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 send that to me. Just keep your hand on this when So it doesn't close. And when you get the Facebook, the YouTube link. Send it to me, send it to me. Alright, so hello and good evening. My name is Jason Arthur and uh, we were supposed to start at 7 o'clock but um, technical difficulties and uh, what is tech without technical difficulties? At any rate, um, I have been building to this moment for quite some time. Uh, I've been talking to a lot of friends about you know doing a show and the conversation has been happening for a number of years. But we're finally here this evening to actually start our first episode of Caribbean Digital. Um, what's Caribbean Digital? Caribbean Digital is pretty much a show about helping small businesses in the Caribbean navigate the digital landscape. All the tools, all the rules, all the regulations, uh, all that kind of stuff that people are trying, especially now during this pandemic, to navigate this show is going to be about that uh, i'm going to share with you all some of the things that i've learned over the years um, and i'm going to try to help you all keep up with what's going on and i'm going to try to help you all discern what's good for you and what's not necessarily good for you so that's that's one secondly the other part of this show which quite frankly is even more exciting to me is where we talk about what's going on up here what's going on in our heads um, you know I like to say that you know entrepreneurs are a different breed of people and because of that it's very difficult for us to find our tribe you know we may have friends who give us a listening ear but they don't really understand um, we have family um, who we do most of this for they don't necessarily understand and um, we have employees and even though they work side by side with us every day, they also don't necessarily understand what we go through. And so I'm hoping that this channel can actually be a place, a space where entrepreneurs can come and commiserate and share and talk about the things that worry them, talk about the things that scare them, you know, um, but also talk about the things that inspire them. Now, let's talk a little bit about me. My name is Jason Arthur, like I said before. I am a marketing consultant. I have been a practicing marketing consultant since 2013. Um, I came back home to Trinidad and Tobago in 2007, and it took me quite a while before I was able to convince people to let me into their businesses. Um, if you're a business person, you know how significant that is. And so since then, till now, I've been working with businesses in Trinidad and in Tobago. And I have worked with a few people overseas as well. And I've learned a lot of things during that time. Um, one of the things that I actually learned uh, made me scrap my business model about two years ago and sit down and redo everything um, to sort of 
deal very specifically with what I was seeing over and over and over from small business people um, who I was hoping to help with marketing. Um, I slowly discovered that a lot of them weren't even ready for the marketing. So a lot of this is going to be me talking to you about what I've learned and what I've discovered to be true for you and for me. But I want to do tonight a little bit different. Uh, one of my clients, Onika Henry, she started her YouTube channel about two weeks ago. And what she did was she talked about how she actually got into this or got into her thing. And I feel as though it makes sense for me to talk about how I got into this. And so what I'm going to do tonight, um, I decided to not try to do this totally off the top of my head because there's so many details to remember. And so I created a presentation and we're going to go through the presentation. And um, at the end of the presentation, I am going to take your questions. I'm going to take your comments. I'm going to take your suggestions. And um, hopefully we're going to have a good time. So without further ado, I am going to start my presentation. All right. So how did I how did I get into this? So what you're seeing on the screen is um, the very first business that I well, I should say the first business, the first attempt at creating a website for a business that I ever did. Uh, it was called Caribbean College Counselor. And basically what happened is that when I was in college, um, I gotten really fascinated with scholarships and, and, and how universities in the U.S. gave scholarships and the reasons and the wherefores and so forth. I myself was on scholarship with three other guys from Trinidad and Tobago. And um, so I would literally just, you know, every time I'd go to different universities and I met other people from Trinidad and Tobago, I would ask them, hey, you know, um, how did you get your scholarship? You know, what was your score? Blah, blah, blah. And then um, eventually, after I left school, I spent literally three months on the phone calling about 500 universities, trying to find out from them what are they looking for. And um, as fate would have it, a friend of mine, his mom, uh, called me. She was actually helping students um, to do the SAT exams in Trinidad at the time. And she called me. She was like an aunt of mine. And she calls and she says, hey, how are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. Listen, I'm helping these students, you know, um, do their SATs. But quite frankly, after they get their scores, I don't know what to do with them after. And um, she wanted to talk to me because I kind of knew what to do with them after, which schools they could apply to and so forth. So, you know, in the, in the conversation, she says, um, so, okay, so you have all this information, Jason. So, like, how much are you charging? I said, well, I'm... I'm actually doing it for free. And Miss Bradford proceeds to ask me if I'm stupid. Literally, those were the words. Are you stupid? Um, it was a kind of a wake up call for me. You know, um, somebody um, who I respected asking me basically, you know, if I'm stupid because I'm, I'm taking all this effort and giving it away for free. And so um, I called a friend of mine in Florida and we proceeded to design this website that you're seeing um the thing is after we did the website um nothing happened you know nobody would actually you know come to me through the website all the calls i i, I was getting were from referrals just like before the website even existed and um i got really frustrated about that by that time I had gotten involved in so many things that, you know, I said to myself, you know, something, something is wrong, you know, something is wrong. But before I get into that, I actually want to sort of give you a little sampling of the things that I got into. And um, I feel very much like a lot of you out there would be able to identify with some of this stuff. Certainly, if not the specific companies, certainly the idea of being involved in, in, in different things. 
but let me ask um, a couple of questions before I go. How many of you have been in more than one business venture in your lifetime? Let me see if I, if I have anybody here. Um, okay. Any answers? How many of you all have been in more than one business venture? No? Okay. How many of you have been in more than two business ventures? Okay. What about three? All right. Four? Five? Okay. All right. Well, let's start with my previous business exploits. So the first, the first one I think everybody is uh, familiar with, um, Amway. Um, got involved in Amway pretty early on. Uh, I'm not going to say much about Amway. I think most people are familiar with Amway. You bring in somebody and that person brings in somebody else, blah, 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 blah. Quickstar. Um, some of you may be familiar with Quickstar. Some of you may not. Uh, Quickstar is Amway, the online version of Amway. Um, they would always tell you, you know, a lot of distri distributors that I that I um, worked with at, at, at that time, they would always say, no, I don't know why. I don't know what was the official line from, from Amway, why they would deny it, but that's what it was. Tahitian Noni Juice. Um, it was touted as um, something that you drank and it was supposed to cure everything that has ever plagued you in your lifetime. Um, I don't know. I bought it. I never drank it. And, 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 but anyways, I won't, I won't get into it. Super blue stuff. Um, this was something that people were using for um, what you call fibromyalgia. Um, the best that I can say about fibromyalgia, it sounds like as though you, you have all these types of pains and a lot of people can't explain like where the pain originates from or whatever. But anyways, you were taking this thing and rubbing it on your, you know, wherever the pain was or whatever. Nut med spray. Similarly, um, you spray this thing wherever you had whatever and it was supposed to work. Medical billing. Lots of people here have probably heard of a medical billing. This wasn't a company. I'm just showing you a graphic here of the opportunity I got into this I think I'd spent about like thirty five to four thousand thirty five hundred to four thousand dollars on this total waste of time for me um, for all kinds of reasons I'm not saying that it's not a good thing catch a call um, brought in a number of these from a, a company in the US and um, sold some of them basically what it was is that um, you know when we had dial up if somebody would call you, it would normally kick, kick your phone call, kick, um, kick the internet off. And uh, what this allowed you to do was to catch the call. So it held on to that um, um, internet um, service long enough for you to pick the phone up to tell the person, I'm on the internet, I'm going to call you back. Anyways, right? These cell phone antennas. Uh, supposedly, you know, you could go anywhere and, you know, they would make the signal, you know, stronger. You know, you go into an elevator and if your elevator um, it typically would um, force the signal to drop, this could hold on to the signal. No, it wasn't working. Prepaid legal services. Um, it's like insurance, but for legal stuff. Um, the guy in my upline, um, you know, he would call ever so often, like once a week. And um, my daughter's, my first daughter's mother, you remember this. He would call and, and um, he would ask you, you know, how you're doing? And, you know, when the report wasn't good and it was always not good. Um, he would say, I thought you said you were a superstar. And, and that was the thing. And, and anybody who has been involved in MLM. Um, multi-level marketing you know that it's, it's almost like a cult kind of thing you know a whole lot of hoopla and so forth um, that didn't work this one adult prepaid let me explain this one and it's so funny um, somebody's on on this live right now um, who, who anyways I, I, I won't I won't um, steal a thunder from what I'm about to say so 
you know, I used to read all these business opportunity magazines. In fact, there's one magazine called Business Opportunity. And when you, you, you go in there, they have all these people selling all these different opportunities. And um, one of them was what they were touting as the, 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 the what do you call it? I don't know if you call it the Nexus, but it was certainly the meeting of the um, internet, um, the prepaid card world, and the adult movie industry all wrapped up in one and they sold it as this thing and you know you buy these cards and you sell them to people you buy the buy the cards for like i don't know maybe ten dollars sell them back for twenty dollars so people could go and use the cards to log in and watch whatever they have to watch so you know i bought this business opportunity package and i had it there and i sat on it for a while and i and then i remember um i was talking to a fraternity brother of mine um I'm in Omega Sci-Fi, Q Dogs. And you know, I told him I didn't want it. it and, and and he said, Well, why? I said to him, you know, honestly, if if this thing really, really works out, you know, and I get rich, um, what what am I gonna tell my my children, you know, when they ask, So Dad, how did you make your money? And um, but first of all, clearly I was really overconfident about how well I could do. Because trust me, it wasn't going to happen, I'm sure about that, when I look back at it now. But um, yeah, I, I thought about that and I said, you know what, I want to be able to give a good answer to, to my children. And um, the the child, or at least one of the children who, who made me think about that, wasn't even conceived yet. Um, I actually think she's, um, she's on this call, her name is Kaya. Um, so thank you, Kaya, even before you were you were born, you were making me um, make decisions uh, about, you know, how I wanted to live my life. So I gave it to, I gave the box to my uh, fraternity brother. I don't know what he did with them. I don't know if he sold them or if he used them and you figure out whatever use means to you. All right. This was the website, you know, you log in, blah, blah, blah. This other one, um, was a company I had paid 6,900 US dollars. And they were called World Traders Association. And basically what they offered was they got all these seconds. So like, let's say Nike makes these shoes and then one of the, the holes is not aligned like it's supposed to be, or, you know, the uh, company makes a t-shirt and the thing didn't stick in the way it's supposed to be and all that kind of stuff. They call them seconds and, 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 and they sell for way, way cheaper than the stuff that's properly produced. And, um, you know, it was supposed to be an opportunity. So, you, you know, you got access to this website and when you logged in, you would see that you can get a palette of sneakers or this or that and blah, blah, blah. And all I was supposed to do was get people to pay me and then I go buy the stuff from these people and then ship them to whomever paid me well as you see here um they ended up being investigated by the federal trade commission it was all a scam so that uh, seven thousand dollars went down the drain um and trust me um wasn't the first time that i lost money and then uh, bought this package from this company where you were going to resell internet services so right now we're using, at least in the Caribbean, we're using Digicel or in Trinidad Tobago, B-Mobile or in the US at the time it was AOL or whoever. Um, a company was telling you that you could resell internet services for cheap. You pay us $10 and you sell it to people for $20 and all you had to do was get 1% of the people in your neighborhood or blah, blah, blah and all this nonsense. Um, I mean, could you really imagine if you're using Digicel or B-Mobile or any one of these companies right now that somebody could just come and tell you that they're selling internet services? You don't know the company, you don't know the name, you don't know anything. And I bought this package like a dummy and of course it went nowhere. And, and, and a whole bunch more stuff. So how many, how many of you have been involved in more stuff than I have? Now I'm gonna I'm gonna take a look here. 
Now, when I look on the screen, it looks like I'm looking the other way, but I'm really looking here. Um, hmm. Yeah. Right? So, bottom line is, by the time this thing happened or didn't happen with that um, college scholarship thing, I, I had had enough. I had really had enough. So many things I had been involved in and no success, right? Um, well, I'm telling you what the point is, right? Um, I wanted you to understand that by the time I, I, I had experienced this thing with, 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 um, with that project, um, I, I decided, okay, I need to know how things work, all right? Because the, the, the consistent factor in all of this is Jason. Jason clearly doesn't know how things work. And very specifically, I guess in this case, how business works. Um, quite honestly, when you learn how business works, you start learning how things work, period. Um, but, you know, for the sake of this discussion, how business works. So... I went searching for some kind of answer, right? Some kind of, of better way. And my searching ultimately led me um, to a guy out of Canada selling, selling this book about how to do search engine optimization. But it was, it was more than a book about search engine optimization. He was really talking about business and business concepts and stuff like that. Um, and so I... I read that book from cover to cover. It was like 550 something pages. I printed out every single page and stapled them in and had like six or seven stacks because you know, the staplers after a while, it's so thick, you know, you could only fit but so many. And um, what happened, first thing that happened is that um, I implemented what I learned with this lady in Texas who I was working with. Um, what she used to do is help people who had bad credit and we say bad credit so you have two sets of credit things going on in the US you have people who have your regular bad credit they didn't pay a debt blah 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 but then you also have people who they had a checking account and maybe they went into overdraft and they didn't pay it off and then you know um, certain amount of time passed and the, the bank would take that and send it to uh, a company called check systems so it was almost like bad credit for people with bad uh, with, with people for people who mishandle their bank accounts and so she would help people get bank accounts and so i used to help her because that had happened to me and she had helped me so i would go online and i would actually go to different chat rooms and this and that telling people about the service and people would curse me out because it was a scam and blah 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 but then some people would use it and they would actually get through and she would pay me $50. So when I learned this search engine optimization thing, I took her website and I optimized her website. And what started happening was she started getting people coming to her automatically. So instead of me, you know, talking to people on the phone or, or going online and doing this, I set up something to do it for her automatically. Anyways, as things started going well for her, you know, I call and I say, hey, well, so how are we doing this? You know, how am I going to get paid and blah, blah, blah. And, um, yeah, she said to me, um, this is my website. You, you got to go get your own website. And that was, yeah, that was a big blow for me because at the particular point in time, I wasn't working. Um, my girlfriend at the time, my, my first daughter's uh, mom, she had really been tolerating, you know, my escapades and so forth. And she was really excited about this. And so when that happened, man, it just it just threw me for a loop. Um, I remember I was depressed for like about three months. I really wasn't doing anything, you know, because it, it had been it had been long, you know. And, and funny enough, I've, I've told this story twice publicly and both times I ended up crying. Not this time. Um, I'm certainly not going to go through the details. Um, So, first lesson, for me at least, 
um, when I do stuff with people now, I always ensure that I'm in, um, at least in the very early stages, that I'm in, in so much control of whatever powers the business that if that person tries to get rid of me, the business falls. That's what I do now to protect myself. Um, I can't speak for anybody else. That's just what I do now, right? If we're going to partner, I am partnering with you because there's something that I have that you need and vice versa. All right? So I know that I'm going into a partnership where I am needed. I'm not going into a partnership where I'm not needed. And you could just pull the rug out for me. So that was my first lesson. So what happened next? Um, after that, more failure. Um, because the truth is, I mean, I had learned about search engine optimization, but I, but I hadn't learned a whole lot of stuff about business, you know, just some uh, business principles, but you know, so more failure. Um, a lot of it also was the fact that I've been following a lot of people following this one and following that one and subscribing to this one and subscribing to that one and ultimately had no real direction you know a little bit from this one and a little bit from that one and um, you know it's a soup and um, you're not going to make money um, following everybody that's just not going to happen so what changed? I finally settled on my guy. I found a guy who I trust, trust, who I trusted and still trust till today. And I just followed the stuff that he was saying. Almost to the exclusion of everybody else. I just followed the stuff that he was saying. No more some of this and some of that and blah, blah, blah and whatever. Um, just just followed it and um, it that happened or started happening not too long before I came back home and so I came back home like really energized with a lot of stuff that he was teaching and um, I was I was ready you know I was ready so what happened um, so I came home family business to manage and um, tried, but like I say here, yeah, in a nutshell, uh, my dreams of working with my family didn't happen because we weren't really on the same page. And um, so the next major lesson, you know, became apparent. And I have here, it's not enough to have ideas or know-how. You need a team around you who has either learned the things you've learned or happened to be like-minded enough that selling your ideas to them is not like pulling teeth. I, I won't say too much more about that. Um, you know, what, what I'll say to people is, you know, you, you have your hopes and your dreams when it comes to working with family and, 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 and friends. But you have to understand that if you're not equally yoked, and equally yoked means all kinds of things. You know, it's not just about um, being uh, same religion or Christian or whatever it is. Equally yoked in terms of how you think, you know, do your philosophies align? Um, if they don't, it's, it's, it's not going to work. Um, no matter how, no matter how many good intentions you have, it, it just, it just doesn't work. So first success, good friend of mine, uh, two good friends actually, uh, Dan Sunny Noon and Linnea Parks. Uh, had spoken to me about doing this show called, well, it, it didn't have a name initially, but this poetry event. And so um, I came back home and, um, you know, I tried to stuff with my family, didn't work out. Um, tried the, the local um, TV station, that didn't work out either. And um, so I called up Dunstan one day, I said, man, when are we going to do this thing? Um, actually, it was, a little, it was a little bit more obscene than that because I was really fed up. And, you know, he said, look, you take care of the poetry stuff. I got to get my bar, you know, working. I said, okay, let's do it. So um, it was me, him, Lindian. But Lindian was like um, in, in Trinidad at the time um, going to school. So she was really not around, you know. But of course, because she was there in the beginning, um, you know, she was involved in some of the conversation. So I decided to go and get two more friends, Misha Trim 
and a, a buddy of mine named um, George, George Daniel. And we started this thing. And immediately a number of things happened. One, the things that I had learned, I was able to implement unfettered. Yes, did I have to talk to them? Of course I did. Did I have to negotiate with them? Of course I did. But you know what? It wasn't like pulling teeth. These people were already basically where I am. You know, there were some nuanced differences, but they were already where I am. And so it was, it was easy for us to work together. And um, this show started off as just a rinky-dink um, poetry event. We were last on the scene. You had so many other poetry houses before. And we just came on the scene and within a year, not even a year, we started uh, December 11, 2008. And by August 27, 2009, we had like the largest crowd I think anybody had seen, at least up till that point for a poetry event, both in Trinidad and in Tobago. Now, certainly since then, it has grown, you know, by leaps and bounds. And so um, what they're doing now dwarfs anything we did then. But when we were doing it, it was, you know, uh, big at the time. Um, just just a slide, a picture of, of, of one of the crowds, you know. Um, in fact, I think this was August 27, 2019. And some of the hard numbers, you know, largest attendance, you know, we charged the most at the door. Uh, most shows in the shortest period, shortest, um, period we, we would do a show every week, whereas everybody else was doing, I think, once a month. Um, we had our own newspaper column. Um, well, most appearances in the media, well, again, newspaper column right impact um after the show was done um we had another one like it called stand and deliver in tobago and this is bef this is we didn't have shows like these before but after we were done you know this is what happened then another show called a lyrical lime clearly a play on on on, on the lyrical lounge uh the wordsmiths apples and oranges you know bartle speak the mood writers so, so clearly, whatever it is we did inspired people to do other things like it, you know. Um, just a matter of note, uh, a lot of people started calling their stuff the lounge, you know. I mean, we, don't, we didn't own lounge, we're just saying, you know. Um, there's a way that if you do something and um, it goes over well, people tend to, to, to mimic in all kinds of, of, of ways, right? Again, we, we, we don't own the word lounge, right? It was just interesting to see after. So this lesson, which was a pleasant lesson, you know, if you have one, two or three good people around you who can, for the most part, see what you see, you can move mountains. Translated, you can make, you can make, you can make money. Um, again, it's not just about money, but finding people who think like you um, and they don't have to think exactly like you you're just in the same vicinity you're gonna have arguments you're gonna have negotiations you're gonna have that but finding people who, who who think like you so that you can do the work that you want to do do the work that you love doing um, it, it, it definitely is a key to success and sometimes it's just one person but it's, it's never gonna be just you you know you just need something, just, just, just one person. So the turning point for me um, after that was um, working with this young lady. Um, her name is Vila Belfort. Um, I had met her uh, during Tobago Fashion Weekend, which was an uh, event I was involved in uh, in 2011. And I uh, tried to convince her for about two years off and on to let me help her with her business. She was a seamstress. And up to that point, she had been um, sewing for about 25 to 30 years, somewhere around there. And uh, it was making about five, you know, five, six thousand dollars a month. And, um, you know, I said to her, I said, look, let me reorganize your business, right? Let, let me, you know, because at this point in time, I, I, I had gotten the consulting bug, but I needed clients. Um, but it was so difficult to convince people to let you uh, into their business. See, I, I don't I do not do like you come to me and we do flyers or we run a quick ad or blah, blah, blah. I literally come into your business and I and I make suggestions um, to 
do things and to stop doing things. And these are things that you're emotionally tied to, right? Or in the case of the things I'm asking you to do, you're emotionally against. And so it's not easy for the kind of work and the kind of depth that I get into to get clients without having had previous clients and previous evidence and previous proof that you could do what it is you say you can do. Uh, hence the reason she took this long. Um, by the way, we, my guys, designed this logo. Um, basically, we sort of, um, I guess, memorialized what happened uh, on her, her website, not her website, her Facebook page. Um, so we had worked for about three weeks, putting her stuff together, rearranging um, how she did her work, um, her numbers, you know, increasing prices, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. So we did that for about three weeks because you have some preliminary work to do depending on who you're working with. You know, hers took three weeks. Some people would take longer. And um, first day when we started tracking everything was as you see it there, July the 6th. And we went from July the 6th to August the 20th, August the 5th. That gave us our month. And in the first month, she went from about five, six thousand dollars to twenty six thousand two hundred dollars, just from changing around a couple of things. Sometime in August, as it says here, by sometime in August two thousand and thirteen, Miss Belfont decides that her sideline money maker should become her full time career. Um, she makes the decision to leave teaching after eighteen dedicated years to provide tailor made clothing for women on a full time basis. So this was her going away shindig at her um, school that she was teaching at. Excuse me. And as of October the 1st, you know, she started doing her thing. So I call this the turning point because you can be confident that you can do something. Um, and in this case, consult. Um, I was I was fairly confident that if I had my own project to do that I could do my thing um, but consulting with somebody I wasn't always confident about that because there are other things going on when you're consulting with somebody you don't have the same latitude the same freedom the same flexibility so in as much as there may be things you know you can do will you be allowed to do them will you be able to convince the client or the clients to allow you to do them because all that is part of of being a consultant, right? So this was a turning point because after I did this, I was like, okay, who else? Truth be told, um, it was pretty difficult to get people even after her. Um, because before I had no proof, basically. And then with her, I had one client. And for some reason, um, a seamstress's success didn't necessarily translate that well for a lot of people. Um, so they won't show that it could work for them. Um, so the next person I ended up with was sexologist. Um, I guess, you know, Monika didn't have anything to lose. So um, she knew that she was studying this thing and she was like, how do I come back home to Tobago, a very conservative place, to talk about sex? How do I bring this back to the public? Blah, blah, blah. All these questions. And so I said to her, I'll help you. And so um, I sat down with her and I decided, let's introduce you to the public. So I came up with this method. I mean, I, I call it the Tobago, or I call it the Tobago FB rollout. Um, it's a series of releases that you do over a three or four day period um, where you take the most interesting parts of what this person does and you get a team of people to release that information via status posts on Facebook over that period um, to sort of gin up curiosity and interest. Um, but more than that, um, the idea is also to get media coverage. Because if, if you have this interesting story to tell and you're sharing it among so many people, a number of these people have friends in the media, right? And they will see it and they'll pick it up. So, so we did that, you know? So what happened? 
so this was me sharing it right this was um saying that uh Onika officially launches friday april the 21st right so we so we were doing it all week and just letting people know that that's when she launches so let's see what happened so that was the 21st a week later 28th she's on the radio doing a show uh four or five days later well i guess that's four days uh april has 30 days she's interviewing in antigua um three days after that she's on ctv same day she's on the radio again then about three weeks after that cnc3 <coughs> sometime in between there she's also interviewed in england and then I think also Jamaica. So the process that we went through actually worked. And, and I've done it for other people before. So I don't want to spend the entire night talking about this because I think you get the point. Um, you know, clearly there are others. Um, and we're not going to spend time on, on that because uh, I don't know how much that benefits you. Um, but while I was doing this, I said to myself, you know, people might ask, oh, so Jason, what is it that you actually do? So I would say that um, ultimately, I do what I believe is needed to help put small businesses in the best position to make money, whatever that needs. And it may sound vague to you, um, but there's so many things you can do um, that getting into specifics doesn't make sense. Um, and I do so with all the know-how and resources I've cultivated over the years. I have programmers that I work with. I have designers. I have whatever it is somebody in a small business could possibly need. I have access to it. Um, much of my doing is really coordinating or orchestrating. In other words, I come up with the direction I think we need to go in. Then I go get the talent needed to pull it off. Then I direct them in the manner that ensures we get a cohesive outcome. It's not enough to have programmers. It's not enough to have designers. It's not enough to have these people. You, you have to be able to steer those people in a particular direction so that you get a cohesive product. It's not just about calling up the designer or calling up the programmer. And over the years, I have learned how to do that. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the things I've done because I want to make it clear to you what I can do um, because ultimately if you're listening to this you, you're asking yourself well okay maybe maybe if he could help me how could he possibly help me like what are the things that he could do for me so let's let's do that so I've led and directed from A to Z the following types of products programming I've directed the, uh, the creation of a number of applications calculators and other tools to include uh, something called an annual returns generator. It's a simple form filler and tutorial that lets you produce neat and accurate annual returns with no fuss. This is how it looks. So you go in, you fill in your information uh, with respect to your annual returns. It does the calculations. So you it tells you, you know, uh, how much money you owe, blah blah blah, whatever the case may be. You just fill in your information. You hit a button, and it downloads all your annual returns. If it if it calculates that you only need to do it for one year, it does it for one year. If you need to do it for 10 years, it does, does it for 10 years. Everything, download it, PDFs, print them out, go take them to the office. Um, how tax right also work? Um, I created a, a simulator where I pretend um, that you're going to get a car as a regular person and as a business person. And I run the calculations through this calculator to show you the exact benefit that you would get if you bought it as a business person and what you wouldn't get if you bought it as a regular person and as you use the calculator it just shows you everything laid out boom 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 um, some of you all may be interested in seeing that in the future um i had i had done this for a project i was doing with a friend of mine uh, it's called a trade receiver um for trading stocks indices cryptocurrencies and forex um this that you see here, pretty much somebody sends you the trade, you accept it. So you're not actually doing the trade yourself, right? 
somebody who really knows how to trade they are sending you trades and you accept and you can pro you can set this up where it can accept the trade automatically or you get a ding every time a trade comes in you look at the trade and you say yeah i want to take this that's why you see the accept and reject button there i didn't want to get into everything that we've programmed i just want to give you like an idea so you see that pretty much whatever you might want to do is probably going to be very you know uh, not challenging compared to some of these other projects web development and design this is my website um this is for my girlfriend uh, Ruth Kamabat Designs. Um, this is a project uh, that's still ongoing, Tobago Association for Returning Residents. Um, PNM hired me some years ago to do um, their website. Um, and this is a project that uh, probably be released sometime next month. Um, it's a bartering website. Um, won't get into that right now. Logo development and branding won't do too much of that. Anything you saw from Villa or Onika or anybody else that I've worked with, pretty much we worked with the whole thing. Um, I've even written a book from start to finish while working with a client. Um, figured that it would help him with his marketing because a lot of people just didn't respect him at all. And one thing that a book does, it gives you a lot of credibility. Like you could leap 10 years into the future by writing a book. So this was the book, How to Grow Tilapia for Fun and Profit. Uh, pretty much everything in the book. Um, I mean, he gave me PowerPoint slides uh, with about 20,000 words and I rewrote everything and added about 20,000 of mine. So the book ended up with about 40,000 words. Um, <coughs> There's some samples of how the book looked. This is the, the, the front of the book, inside the book. All right, and that's him and that's me on the bottom there. Um, oversaw the A to Z production of two YouTube channels, uh, mine as well as Onika's. All right, everything um, from scheduling the content, and um, and I've also written and recorded and produced a number of courses to be taught online through pay per view models, <coughs> and more. But in as much as I have said all of that. There's one thing that I think that I bring to the table that is probably more important than a lot of things that you're seeing there or you all have seen on the screen. And that's strategy. Right? Um, I think what I'll do is I'll explain strategy um, because a lot of people get confused between strategy and tactics and stuff like that. And then I'll kind of show you how that relates to you, a small business person, and your needs. All right. Um, so what is strategy? Strategy is the overarching plan of action designed to get an outcome. Right. So let, let's give an example. So you meet, a, let's say you meet a girl and you realize she likes bad boys, but you're a good boy, yet you'd still like to get her attention. So what, what is the strategy that you're going to use to get her attention? Well, you're going to pretend to be a bad boy so as to get her attention. That's the strategy. You're going to pretend to be a bad boy to get her attention. You could have decided to pretend to be a rich person. That would have been another strategy. But your strategy is you're going to pretend to be a bad boy. Like I said, you could have pretended to be a rich person. Another strategy. So the outcome you intend is getting her attention. And the strategy is pretending to be a bad boy. So what's next? Tactics. A lot of people confuse strategy and tactics. Let's see what tactics are. So what are tactics? A tactic is some action you take to help you get to your goal that is consistent with your strategy. So let's give an example. So notice that the tactic is the actual thing you do while the strategy is the overall idea. Right? So let me just say this. If I said that you're going to pretend to be a bad boy, you would still ask me, okay, so what did you do? So you see, 
strategy is not the, the actual doing thing it's it's the idea all right so in keeping with, with the example above you decide to start cursing when she passes by because you see bad boys doing that as well you start wearing your pants hanging off your butt because you see bad boys doing the same these are the things that you're doing that underpin the strategy these are the tactics cursing is a, is a tactic Wearing your pants hanging off your butt is a tactic. But they're not just tactics. They are tactics that are consistent with the strategy. If you showed up in a, in a nice car, mm, you know, well, depends on the car. Maybe it has rims and stuff. Maybe that would be consistent. But if it's really nicely polished, blah, 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 maybe, maybe not too consistent, you know. So both of these qualifiers are tactics because they are being used to try to attain your goal and are consistent with your professed strategy. So why does this matter to you? It matters because all businesses are not the same. All owners are not the same. All situations to include availability of resources, skill sets, and sometimes simple preferences are not the same. They aren't. Therefore, you may often need a customized approach to helping you move your business forward. And that's where somebody like me comes in, in terms of strategy. How do we figure out what is the best way for you to do what you need to do in your business? What is the best way for you and your circumstances? So we're pretty much coming to the end here um, so I can start talking with you all and so forth. But let me give you a sort of a quick breakdown of what I offer so that um, you still don't walk away thinking, okay, I get all of that, but what, 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 you know? So short online courses, how to write ads that actually sell as opposed to ones that don't. How to create a, should say, lead magnet that makes people notice your advertising. A lot of advertising just passes you whoosh on Facebook and there's some of the ones that you stop and pay attention to. Um, I was trained in how to do that. How to price your products and services to make a profit. I have a whole price pricing course. It takes about three hours to get through. Um, how to design a webinar that sells for you over and over. The fundamentals of marketing for small business. I think some small businesses would do well to at least understand the fundamentals. The ideal product mix workshop. This was actually, um, this actually came up because I had to create a tool very early on when I was consulting for a guy who he could do so many things and he wanted to do all of them. And I had to try to convince him what was his ideal set of products to actually go after in the market. And I had to develop a tool. And then the course came out of the tool uh, showing people how to pick the ideal products to go after. Uh, how to produce a very own YouTube show, of course. Uh, from content to look and feel. Um, how to do video testimonials that do much more than sell your product. Testimonials do much more than sell your product, a whole lot more. Um, and how to get your own branded wear and know that they look good before you ever print them. Services, assistance with getting everything on the previous slides done. So on the previous slides, those were courses um, but somebody might not want to do a course or they might do the course and still say, hey, I want help getting this stuff done. So that's a service. Coaching. I do coaching as well. Consulting. Consulting is when you really get into the business. Coaching is sitting down, talking to the person. They're asking questions about this and that. Should I do this? Should I do that? You know, what's the ne next step? Blah, blah, blah. Consulting is when you really get into the person's business. Other services, technical website security and, and hosting, payment services set up. Right now, I can get paid four different ways online. Uh, email marketing set up, uh, e-commerce set up, WooCommerce and Shopify. We don't work with anything else, right? I made sure my guys specialize in these so that we can do these very quickly. And if you have problems, uh, Zoom, web page and integration. Right now, some people, a lot of people are working on Zoom now. They need to make their reservations through the zoom and set everything up something need to get paid you know we can set all of that up and um number six is integration of all of the above so that's 
pretty much it in terms of my introduction to you. Um, as I said before, this show is not going to be just about talking about how to do this and how to do that and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, I really, really want to get in here um, because it's in here that hurt me. And um, I know that up there is hurting a lot of people in terms of how we think and how we process stuff. So I'm not going to say much more. I'm just going to go look at the screen and, and start looking at the questions and never mind that it looks like I'm looking that way. As a matter of fact, let me go to the next screen. Okay. All right. So questions, 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 questions. Let me see the comments. Where's my, where's my tech guy? Where's my tech guy? Okay. Shaq says more than a CPL. I'm not sure what that meant. I guess he'll tell me. Um, thank you, Onika. Hey, Kaya, how are you doing? Trini Marion, is that Misha's sister? Oretta? Ruth, more than you can count? But is it more than I did? Shaq says the other antenna was a real mess. Listen, this is a life of many Caribbean adults. Oh, the dreams they tried to sell us. Yep. <laughs> I don't know you was up me. <laughs> Woo! Okay, crazy Renee. A telly gigolo. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ruth says she needs one of those cards. I, I, can, I, can, I can call my, my fraternity brother. I'm pretty certain he's not out of those cards yet. Um, thank you. Thank you, Kester. Denisa says, no, I can't beat that. I guess that means she didn't try as many things. Right, they say, no, nah, you take the cake. Yep. Ruth says, convincing clients to allow you to work your magic is the hardest feat without real evidence. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. Um, thanks, Ron B. I'm not sure who that is. Let me see, Ronald Jeffrey. Mm, I don't know. Avian says she missed it. Thank you, Avian. Hola, Lorraine. Thank you there, Jared. Um, so yeah, questions, guys, questions. Tell me, you know, you know what kind of questions you all have. Um, you know, I, I am, I'm not gonna say I'm all talked out, but I don't want to to talk that much now because um, I really want to hear what you all have to say. No more questions? Maybe I should ask my tech guy, are questions coming in and I'm not recognizing? Kevin? Kevin, am I missing something? He left. 
Okay. Are there are there que are there questions coming in and I'm not and I'm missing them or something? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 All right. Well, um, if there are no more questions, I uh, I think we're gonna probably jet till the next time. I'm just gonna look through one more time. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Very strange, though. Kaya, you're still there? Okay, new comments. Okay. So Denisa, Denisa says, with the flood of online content during the pandemic, do you have any general advice for entrepreneurs on social media marketing? Um, I think that the, the, the key term there is a uh, flood of um, online content. Um, I would say there's always a flood of online content. Um, the key is uh, always as it's been. Um, how do you stand out? Like, how do you stand out? Like how, like, how do you make people sit up and take notice? How do you stand out? And I think that's the problem. I think most people don't ever answer that question. Um, because honestly, people are paying attention to stuff. You know, no, no matter how much stuff there is, people are paying attention to stuff. Um, you know, I've had conversations with Lorraine uh, so many times uh, when 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 uh, we talked about people and their lack of attention and so forth. And I think people are confusing lack of attention um, with choice. People have choice, and so if. If this thing is not interesting, I go to the next thing. Um, you know, it's like I remember living in New York and um, we were, well, we had illegal cable. And, you know, I mean, we could never find anything to watch, you know. Um, but it's because you had, you had choice. But as soon as you, well, the illegal cable went, um, you would see something on the television screen and you're not that interested, but you don't really have that many channels, right? So you just sit there and sure enough, you would find something that was interesting. Now, what that says is the thing needs to be interesting, at least initially, right? Because there are a lot of things that are not interesting initially, but they get interesting, when you have choice, you have to be more interesting initially because people go to the next thing. It's not, it's not that they don't have a, 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 a t attention spans or whatever. That's not it. Um, and, I, and, I, and I strongly debate that because it's a phenomenon that we call binge watching. Binge watching. In, in an age where we say people don't pay attention, we have something called binge watching where people will sit and watch shows for hours and hours and hours on end. If people didn't have any uh, or had less attention span, why do we have something called binge watching, which is a phenomenon that did not exist 20 years ago when we had less choice? So, so is it really that people don't have the same attention span? No, they have more choice. And if you're boring or if you're not exciting early up, then I'll go to the next thing. So that's, you know, it's your job. If, if you go to the bank right now, what do people do? Before you had to sit and wait in a line for an hour, you just sitting there, just wait. Now I have a choice. So what do I do? I pick up my phone and I, and I, and I occupy my time. Somebody will say, you, you know, okay, well, um, they don't have attention. Or, no, I have a choice now. And that's what people are doing. They're exercising their choice. So long answer, um, Denisa is you have to figure out how to be interesting and interesting early enough in whatever it is you're doing to get people's attention because people still want food they still want clothes they still want this they said none of those things have gone anywhere they still want those things you just have to be interesting and um, that's that is the challenge
where would you start with a young entrepreneur? Well, I mean, I guess I mean, it depends. Um, so there are two types of entrepreneurs, right? Somebody who knows what they, well, knows what kind of business they want to get involved in, and somebody who doesn't. Um, if somebody already knows the kind of business that they want to get involved in, I mean, the place that I start with is marketing. And I, I actually would like that person to start with the fundamentals of marketing. Like, I really think everybody should understand the fundamentals, right? Because you have to learn how to get clients. You have to learn, um, uh, I forget the guy's name now. Um, he says, create a customer. Um, we have to learn how to create customers out of thin air. Um, and that's where I would start, you know, the fundamentals of marketing. A lot of the other things that you could learn about business don't really become problems till you start actually making some money. So you need to get, you know, people through the door. So I would learn the fundamentals of marketing. Ron says he's ready for some consultancy. Time? Oh, what's that? Curfew? Forget the policeman. All right. Any more? Any more questions? Karen says thinking out of the many boxes. Yeah. Um, I think um, I think sometimes um, people say think out of the box and um, they, they don't recognize uh, uh, how important it is to if not don't think like everybody else is thinking certainly don't do what everybody else is doing right because you're just gonna get like like passed by right um, I mean, what, what stops you when you're driving? Somebody who's doing what they're supposed to do on the road or somebody who's not doing what they're supposed to do? You know? Um, I mean, that's, that's, that's the essence to some degree of at least the initial stages of any kind of marketing. Get my attention. There's some stuff you need to say to me after you've gotten my attention. Like, that's just when it starts. Okay, you have my attention. What do you have to say to me? Because that's where some other people fall down. They're great at getting your attention, but they can't keep it because they don't have anything to say. Um, so, you know, you have you have those two parts. All right. Kaya, are you still on? I think you may have found out some things about your dad tonight that you didn't need to know. Wow. Kaya, you didn't stay for my whole thing? We're going to have to have a talk tomorrow. All right, so listen, um, if we have no more questions, um, it was really nice um, doing this first, this first live. Um, it's something I've been wanting to do for a while, and um, I'm not going to prolong it if there are no more questions. Um, oh, Laureen says, and then pricing, not so. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure what you mean, but I mean, obviously pricing does, um, does matter. And, and as I mentioned, I have a course on, on pricing. Um, but yeah, pricing does matter, but um, pricing is very contextual. So can't really have much of a conversation about that. And, you know, unless I know, you know, what we're talking about. Um, let's see. My question is, how would you apply your consistent, your consultancy skills? If the police hold you for <laughs> um, I think I'll be going straight to jail actually. Um, yeah, I, I think I'll be going straight to jail. I'm not not actually prepared to um, to deal with that. It's, it's it's is it what time is it? Onika, what time is it? Well, okay, this is nine. Past nine. Okay, we're fine. Okay, fine. Okay. <laughs> Xavier, thanks, man. Oh, okay. Shaq and Onika working together. Okay, all right. I see what's going on. Guys, 
we're gonna do this again um so it's supposed to be seven o'clock and, and and pretty much next week will be seven o'clock uh, we just had some technical stuff this this week um, seven o'clock every Wednesday what I think may happen is the frequency may increase depending on the kind of conversation that people want to have um, and if and if that happens to be the case then we will figure out you know what's the next day during the week um, let me see hold on so Anton asks are these courses available for subscription now not right now um, what I'm actually going to do is teach the courses live a few times um, make sure that um, anything in the course that may be unclear we pick them up live and and, and, and you know and make any modifications that that, that um that are needed because uh, when you put something by itself um, behind a login it has to live on its own there's nobody there to make this clarification or that clarification or whatever the case may be so you you have to take your courses for a spin in the real world a few times before you know for sure okay I can record this and put this down so that's pretty much how that's gonna be done Thank you, um, Shaq. Oh, hi, Rhonda. Rhonda Bacchus. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So, guys, um, next week, let me go back to my slide here. Um, we're going to be covering. Uh, we're going to be covering this. How to choose a payment processor that fits your size and type of business without all the technical minutia you don't want to know about. As I said tonight, I can get paid four different ways online, um, and I want to sort of go through that. Uh, there's a lot of information that's out there. Uh, well, not a lot, but certainly some that's kind of misleading, and I wanted to take you know um, a stab at it. And so you can definitely look forward to that next week. So without further ado, guys, I am done for the night. And don't forget to click and subscribe if you haven't. <laughs>